What's going on everyone? My name is Ryan, I get Shadow Master, and I'm here with uh, some more coding. This is HTML Basics 3, last one before we head on to JavaScript. 15 things to color. It's got introduction, tables, uh, rows, columns, uh, second column. It's got tables, and div, and span. Alright. Introduction. Our HTML journey has been progressing very nicely. We've covered how to set up the skeleton of the HTML file. Headings, paragraphs, images, and links. Font color sizes and types. Background colors, aligning text, bolding, and italicizing uh, font. In this course, we'll cover some important structural aspects of HTML. Table, tables, divs, and spans. Uh, I don't know why that's... See, this, this, I don't know why this isn't working, what's my browser saying, is only 100, yeah, alright, get warmed up, make the heading font, have the family Garman and the color red, add an image, and a second image, which is clickable and links to a site, check the hint, if you don't remember how to do this, yeah, I'm just gonna, I don't know why that's, not working. alright, so as you can see, we did this. We've got a uh, volcano erupting in Japan. Mm. I can usually tell what these are. So reading it, I don't know what that is. I can't remember what these are, so we're just gonna go next. Tables are very useful. We use them to store tabular data so it is easy to read. When you want to present information neatly in a table with rows and columns, you've guessed it. The table tag is what you need. Yeah, hang on. I'm sending a message to my girlfriend. Alright, sorry guys. Um, there are many tags associated with tables, but it all starts with the table tag, so let's add that first. Add an opening and closing set of table tags to the body of this HTML document. Go to the results view, you'll notice that nothing visible was added. That's because our table's not populated yet. We'll learn how to do that soon. Rows of information. The table is just a list of information rights and rows and columns. Sorry about that, guys. We use the TR tag to create a table row. We'll learn how to create a column shortly and everything will start to come together. Sorry, I dropped my mouse. It's busted and I need to get a new one. You don't really create columns and tables. Instead, you tell each row how many cells to have and that determines your number of columns. We'll get to the details of the table cells in a minute. In the meantime, we've added a set of uh, uh, table row tags, the table row tags to the table on line nine, creating a table row. Add two or more rows on the table to line eleven, line twelve, right there. And it's got that little comment to tell you exactly where. Look at the HTML now. Can you tell that there are still three rows? We've added a little more white space to make it easier to deal with table columns and table data. Let's see. And we've added a single table data cell to the first row, essentially creating a single column. If you view the results tab now, you'll see that it's that we've drawn a, a border around it. It's not that impressive, but don't worry. We're about to add more da table data cells. We're starting to add a lot of HTML elements now. Make sure you in to indent your tags to, as you nest them so you don't get confused. In the second row, add a table data a cell and type 2 between the tags. In the third row add another cell with, with 3 between the tags. Go to the result view, you can see that we have one column and three rows and each row contains exactly one cell. Save and submit. Go. 
it may not seem like much, but you just created a single column table in the last exercise. Nice work. Now, take a look at what we have on our page. Notice that the first two table rows, now ha we now have two table, cell da table data cells. Adding a second table data cell has the effect of adding a second table column. Although, if you go to the results view, it may look funny because this one, the first row, has two cells. Let's fix that. Add to the second row of table data so with a value add to the second row a table data with table data cell with the value 1897 is right there. Uh, add to the third row a table data cell with the value 1935. Check out the re results view. We now have two a total of two columns and three rows, which in each row has six has two cells. Sweet. Now we have a basic table. Go into the next section to find out how to add a header and title to our table. Alright. Head of the table, okay, here's the table we made earlier. It's okay, but it looks like we have a list of famous Hollywood people. Monsters? And their birth years. Yeah, hang on. I'm sorry guys, I'm texting my girlfriend at the same time this. Uh if you guys uh see her, I don't know if she has a YouTube channel names. So I'm not, I'm not going to tell you until I find out her name. Mm. Sorry, I'm nervous. I'm cold weather the whole time. Mm. Okay, let's see. Let's see. All right. To make our table look a little more like a table, we use the T head and T body tags. These go within the table tags and stand for table head and table body, respectively. The head HTML tag contains information about a web page, example, its title. And the body tag contains the contents of the web page. In the same way, the T head tag can be thought of as containing information about a table and the T body tag containing the actual tabular data. So we'll just go right down here. Since everything we currently have is just tabular data, put everything we have in our table so far between a set of T body tags. We'll add the table head next. And as you can see, I did that there. Because I'm just a genius. You'll notice that we added a T head tag above the T body. This works much as the same. Ah, stupid cat. My cat's over here. Okay, this works much the same way as T-Body in that you can add rows to a T-Head. Why learn T-Head and T-Body if nothing visible changes? Well, it's a good idea to separate the table into head and body because it'll help us style in the table in CSS, which you'll learn very soon because this is the last one and we're already halfway finished. Add a single row with the table row within the table heading section. Within this row, add two table header cells with the values famous monster, monster, and Bertier. If table data cells were made with table data, I mean with TD, how do you think you can make table header cells? Check the end if you need help. And it's TH. 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 Okay. TTH. Okay. Let's go. Almost done. Our table is missing a title. We want to add a title. Hang on. My cat. Ouch. The claws. Alright. Our table is missing a title. We want to add a title row that goes all the way across the top. To do so, we need to use the call span attribute for the th tag. By default, table cells take up one column. But if we want a table cell to take up the space of three columns instead of one, we can set the call span attribute to three. It looks like it is. Th call span equals three. Three columns across. Yes. 
instructions. Go to the results view. You we've added the title row for you, but it only spans one column right now. Make the column span. Make the column span two columns with the call span attribute. Adding the attribute call span equals two to the th tag should do the trick. Return to the result view again. Our title not spans two columns now. Style that here. Your table is starting to look great, but it still looks a little bland. We've gone ahead and added some styling to the table to make it a bit easier to read. It's your job to add the finishing touches. Feel free to play around with any of the style attributes we added. You'll learn much more about these things later during the CSS courses. If you want to add more than one style, you just separate your, tile, your style so the semicolon. Like th style equals font dash has 12 pixels, semicolon color red, whatever. Uh, make the famous monster and birth year labels emphasized. I hate make the metallicized. Make the famous monsters by birth year title red. Bordork. Oh, cool. Bordork. And I did that. Okay, on to the next lesson. Recap. Whoosh, we've learned quite a bit. What can you do now? Write an HTML comment, create a, a list, order it and unordered, make test text stand out using emphasis and strong, make, change the color, size, and alignment of text using the style attribute, create HTML tables. Hit save and submit code to complete the section and learn about two incredibly useful tags, div and span. Alright, here we go. Div, divide and conquer. See, we're in div and span now. I think it's fantastic. You see, we got this. One of the most versatile structure tags available to you is the div tag, short for division. Div allows you to divide your page into containers, that is, different pieces. This will come in handy when you begin learning CSS on the next unit. Um, you'll be able to style differently. You'll be able to style different parts of your website individually. Check out the results tab. You should see three blocks: one red, one blue, and one green. Each one has its own container. It has its own div container. Now you try on line ten. Create your own div and give it the background color yellow. Use the width and the height syntax we've used for the other div as a guide. And you see, it works like this. Div style equals with 50 pixels, 50 pixels, background color yellow, and it'll just do it like that. All right, nice work. You, as you can probably guess, the smart use of divs will eventually allow you to create visual HTML objects like sidebars, menus, and more. Just like with images, you can make divs clickable by wrapping them in AA tags. Which one of these is? Oh, it's the yellow. Go ahead and make your yellow div link to your favorite site. Check the hint if you need a refresher, and it's going to go to. It it, it it's it's going into here. It, it's going to this one. I can just I guarantee. See, open new tab and save. Oh, it, it, it actually goes, it, yeah, it goes to this one. You can see, we're almost done, too. Okay. Spantastic. With div, it allows you to, to... Sorry, I'm texting my girlfriend.
While div allows you to divide your web page up into pieces you can style individually, span allows you to control styling for smaller parts of your page, such as text. For example, if you always want the first word of your paragraph to be read, you can wrap each first word in span tags and make them read using CSS. For now, we'll continue to use the style attribute to change colors. Wrap the word red in the editor in span tags and give the span tag style color red. Notice how only the word between the span tags changes color. Great, you're really getting... Hang on. Well, me and my girlfriend have new nicknames for each other. Alright, great, you're really getting the hang of this. These tags can be a little tricky though, so let's go through one more time. One more example. Color is just one attribute you can selectively change with span tags. You can also change font size, font family, and any other style attribute you can think of. Sorry if I'm talking a little bit funny, I'm bored, and I've been up for 16 and a half hours today. <laughs> Alright, use, no, 15 and a half hours today. Use span tags to change the word future to the font future. Leave the rest of the font as is. Don't include the exclamation point in the span tag. Alright. Recap. Great work. In addition to what you've already learned, you now know how to divide your web page up for easy styling with div tags, uh, style pieces of text, and change their properties using span tags. In the next course, you'll, we'll see how we can take much of the styling we have been doing, such as controlling font family, font color, and text alignment, and put it in its own separate file. By doing that, we can use tans like div and span to import style to hard pages with, without writing style equals color red every time. We've given you a taste of how span can be powered by CSS in the editor. Check it out in the results tab. Cool, huh? It seems Smith go to finish this course and move on to the wonderful world of CSS. And see, this is how it's going to work. Everything within paragraph is that. It's between span, it's like, that, it's like that. Okay, well, thank you guys for watching. Um, sorry if I'm breathing to my mic. It's just, I, I, need, I need a new... I'm about to start doing a new style of recording, and it's going to take a while to upload and everything, but it, it's, it's going to be really cool. So, hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for watching, and whenever we come back, we'll be in JavaScript. We're going to skip CSS until we get finished with JavaScript. Thank you. Goodbye.